Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, I should say, unless you're in the US, so that's uh, good morning uh, to you. Uh, so thanks for joining today's webinar, which is all about uh, getting organized in your catalog. Not the most thrilling subject, but a necessary one after all. Um, but learning how to do this and learning what's possible definitely make your life much easier, more stress-free, and so on. Now, today or this afternoon, we're going out to uh, three different locations. Uh, so we're in our normal, if you like, webinar room where people have signed up for uh, and are engaging there. And then we're also going out live to Facebook and YouTube as well. So I will do my best to monitor comments from three different sources. Uh, I need an extra pair of eyeballs, definitely, um, and do my best to answer uh, the common questions that we're talking about. Okay, before we get to today's subject, just a few housekeeping things. Uh, so the time we have today is a max of 60 minutes, and I'll do my best uh, not to go over that as well. Uh, the webinar is being uh, recorded, uh, so you'll get a, a notification uh, tomorrow sometime when the recording is ready, or you can just head to our YouTube uh, channel and find uh, the recording there as well or also on our learning hub and it will exist on Facebook too so don't worry if you miss anything you can always watch it uh, again okay uh, those of you who are in the webinar room uh, those of you on Facebook and YouTube can ignore this of course you're very welcome to uh, engage in the chat as I can see that you're doing now already and of course keep it coming on Facebook and YouTube as well uh, if you want to ask a question in the webinar our room uh, then please use the Q&A tab uh, otherwise it just tends to get lost in the stream of chat that's going past and I'm more likely uh, to see it as well. Uh, if those things aren't interesting to you, chatting etc then you can hide that and get a bit more screen uh, real estate as well. So let us begin. Okay, now there's a lot to get through to today. I have my big cheat sheet of things to do um, and we're gonna split it up into different sections uh, to make sure that we cover everything. Uh, the first part is gonna be about just setting up your catalog for success, where to place it and so on, uh, how to make it perform the best um, and those kinds of things. Uh, then we're gonna look at a couple of different import strategies uh, so importing from an existing location, importing from a memory card and how to manage that as well. Then we'll talk about all the different ways that you can organize, either using system folders or working in user collections as well. Um, and uh, finally, once we've got through that, then we have a look at keywords and making that easy as well. Okay, so that's what our plan is for today. June, I saw you ask on Facebook, how do you find the webinar chat? You can't as you're on Facebook, um, but feel free to put your questions in the Facebook chat uh, as well. Okay, um, all right, let's get started without uh, further ado. Oh. The other screen, otherwise you're gonna see five million Davids and all kinds of other stuff going on, so that's better. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's that we almost break the internet with broadcasting our broadcast. Okay, um, right, so let's get straight into it. We're gonna close this catalog down, like so. Uh, we don't need to look at this one. We might come back to this later if we need to. And we're gonna start from scratch as if you're building a new catalog. And as I said, with all the various different uh, import strategies uh, and so on. Okay, so first of all, into Capture One, we're gonna say new catalog. And what we create in a catalog is uh, essentially a database. So with, uh, with this database, uh, this is gonna track a bunch of things. It's gonna know where your photos are, and it's gonna know uh, the adjustments of your photos, and it's gonna store things like metadata and keywords, and also a small preview of all your photos as well. So I'm gonna just give this a name, Webinar PM like so, and we're gonna say, or well, first we're gonna click on this square and decide where are we gonna put our catalog. Now, catalogs and videos don't have to, sorry, catalogs and images don't have to live in the same location, but we wanna uh, set up our catalog for success. So ideally, we want your catalog database uh, to be on the fastest, most sort of accessible, high-performing place that you can put it. Now, generally, that's the internal drive of the computer that you're working off. And if that's an SSD, then so much the better. 
So right now, for me, the best place to put it would be my internal drive on this laptop that we're running the webinar off. So in my pictures folder, I'm gonna choose that, and we've given our catalog a name, and we're gonna say, okay, and then Capture One is now ready to receive photos in an import process. Now there's nothing to stop you putting a catalog on an external hard drive, on a server system, but what you have to consider is the performance limitations of your storage medium. So for example, if I had an old 5000 RPM hard drive connected by USB 1 and I put my catalog on there, then of course that's gonna have a negative impact because the read and write times is gonna be super slow. If for example, I've got an SSD drive, which we're gonna use later, uh, connected uh, via Thunderbolt 3, then that's almost as good as, um, um, almost as good as my internal hard drive. So you just really need to consider the kind of performance of uh, the storage medium. Okay, so what have we created so far? Let's just right click at the top, little shortcut. So as I said, oh, uh, it's over on the other monitor. Let's bring this across. Uh, all I've created is this catalog database for. So let's import some photos and we do two different um, scenarios. So we're gonna import from a memory card and import from an, uh, an existing external hard drive. Two kind of quite different processes, if you like. Now, when you create a new catalog, you'll notice there is the massive import images button uh, in the middle. Uh, but I'm gonna go up here because you can always return to the import images button up in the top left, like so. Okay, so first of all, in our first scenario, uh, I've got a small external hard drive connected. You can see it here, it's just a little SSD. I'll show it to you later. And I'm just gonna grab a folder here with a few subfolders. And the purpose of this demo is to say, if you have um, you know, an existing file structure that you want Capture One to honor, then it's completely simple and easy to do that. Now, obviously today I'm not gonna import 20,000 pictures or anything like that, um, because uh, then we'd be sitting here staring at progress bar for half an hour, so that's no good. So I've just got five folders in a subfolder system that we want to import. So let's open those up. Now, straight away, nothing happens in the import window. Why is that? Because if we wanna see those subfolders, then we have to turn on include subfolders here like so. So Capture One will then dig through all those different folders and make sure we're gonna import everything in that folder tree, for example. Okay, now the next part is the destination. Where do we want those to go? So what we want to do is leave them at their current location. As I said, we want to honor the file structure that already exists on my hard drive. So I don't wanna move anything, I don't wanna copy anything, I want them to stay exactly where they are. So the destination is super important to leave that set to current location. Now we had a question um, earlier this morning uh, that said, why am I copying all my photos and I can't find them afterwards? Now most likely they had this option set uh, which is called Inside Catalog. Now that was really a, a system designed for older legacy Aperture users who were very used to the Aperture way of doing everything, which would take your photos and kind of tuck them inside um, the catalog database. So it would make one huge packaged file, if you like. Now that was fine for some reasons. It could make catalogs that were portable and easy to move around. But the issue of that is of course, the catalog could only be as big as the hard drive it was contained on. Now, when Aperture was first launched, cameras were six megapixels, two megapixels, didn't really matter so much. Now, going up to 60, 100, 150 megapixels, you can fill up a hard drive very quickly. So soon there became a need to have catalog in one location, pictures spread across multiple hard drives and so on. So just be aware, if you want to honor your existing structure, make sure you choose current location. Uh, yes, George, on YouTube, it does maintain the folder tree. So have a look. Uh, now, everything else under this point, if I just collapse all of that, everything here is kind of bonus information or bonus features that you can add. What's really important is just to pay, for, pay attention to where are my pictures coming from? Where are they going to? You can kick off a backup. We'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, if 
you're not storing in current location, you can rename. So we'll look at renaming when we import from a memory card. We can add some basic metadata. These aren't all my photos, so I'm not gonna add my copyright. Uh, and we can add some basic adjustments, which we're gonna do on the next import as well. But for now, let's just keep it simple. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's say import all, and that will start kicking off. We're gonna to go to our first tool tab. This will be pretty quick because remember, we're not moving any data. We're just reading from my SSD. So that import process is now completed. And down here you can see, let's just hide my viewer. You can see the various different folders with their photos inside like so. And if we look at um, my little SSD where we imported them from, there, my photos master, you can see it just reflects that folder tree perfectly like so. Now, what's this activity bar doing along the top here? So that's generating a preview for every single photo that we imported. Why are we doing that? Because that's for uh, performance reasons. So when I go to a photo, for example, and open it up uh, into Capture One, we don't have to read the raw data. We're just actually looking at a preview of the shot. It's only when I zoom to 100%, for example, that we then need to use the raw data. Now there's one setting that uh, you can um, be aware of or need to be aware of, which is in the preferences, which is under image, the preview image size. So this is how big Capture One is gonna build um, that preview. Now that needs to be at least the same size of your monitor so that when we're browsing through Capture One, so if I just pick up some shots and we browse through, that means that it happens nice and quickly, so there's no delay. Now, if the preview is too small, then it's gonna stutter in between each of those shots. So it's just important that, that the preview size is um, um, set appropriately to your monitor. Now, that's a, a retrospective adjustment. So if you think, ah, I really should make this bigger, let's say I had a 5K monitor, then you would have to bump that up. Now, if I change it now, new previews won't be regenerated it only happens if i choose if we just uh, choose that shot it only happens if i was to say regenerate previews so just be aware make sure you set that to the right size uh, for your particular screen so i'm just off a laptop so that's fine if we had a 4k screen we would go up to here 5k screen we would go up to here now that task of building previews, that's just a background task. So I can just leave this running, I can go and edit, I can adjust, I can do all the things you're gonna learn about coming up. You don't have to wait for that to finish. So you can just let it whir, whir away in the background. So what else happened after our import? So we see an entry up here, all images. That just shows me the entire total of images in my catalog. We've got the last 10 imports that have popped up. And then we've got our folder selection down here, which shows me uh, the location of my photos. Next, we're gonna import from a memory card. I'm gonna have a very quick look at uh, questions. Um, let's have a look. Now there is lots across three different platforms. So I'll do my best just to pick out one or two uh, common ones if you like. Um, let's see, let's see. Just gonna scroll up a bit. Um, and again, if we don't answer your question, or me, if I don't answer your question, don't forget we've got support, social media, always there to support you. Feel free to hit us up with uh, questions there as well. Uh, any questions about moving files around, collections, all that kind of stuff is all gonna be covered. So don't worry, Jim, uh, your question uh, will be answered, don't panic. Um, let's see, just having a look. See, a lot of the questions are stuff that are gonna come up actually. So we should be kind of in a good uh, place really. Anything about sessions, I'll actually do a different webinar for that. So we won't be able to cover sessions today. We're purely gonna focus uh, on catalogs, for example. All right, and if you wanna help each other out in the chat, I'm totally fine uh, with that as well. So, all righty. Um, memory card. So I've got a memory card here in this nifty little uh, dual slot reader. 
It's not going to focus, probably. There we go. It's not the fastest uh, memory card in the world. So you'll notice the difference. Helen, who I saw, said uh, the import was super fast. You're going to notice the difference from an attached drive like an SSD, where we're not copying data to a memory card, where we are copying data. So I'm going to plug this bad boy in here to the side and let's see what happens. So right now our uh, import window is going to open up so it's detected the memory card and then this time let's import to a different location. So obviously uh, we're not going to import to the current location because we don't want them to stay on the memory card. We want them to be nice and safe on our hard drive somewhere. So uh, first of all, destination wise, I'm going to choose a folder, obviously, because we want to get them off uh, the card. Now, rather than put them on that external hard drive, I'm going to put them somewhere else just for variety. So I'm going to make a new folder here called uh, My Photos and create that like so. And you see the dialog here says set this as our input folder like so. Now, when we're importing to a destination, you see a subfolder pops up underneath. So we've got some additional choices of where we want to move and manage those photos. So we can do a couple of things here. We can use something called a token uh, to pull some kind of data out of the, uh, the pictures to make a folder, or we can just make up folders manually as well. So all these shots, and there's only 20, I didn't think you'd want to sit here and watch 500 shots be imported again. So I've just grabbed a quick selection of 20 shots uh, off a memory card. So these are all from Canada. So I'm going to make a folder called uh, Canada 2019. And now what I want Capture One to do is to put them in a folder based on their date. So what we can do is use a token to pull that information out of the images and create those folders. So we do that by hitting this little square box here. And this opens up this kind of slightly, I'll, I'll admit, bewildering list of tokens that you can use to build folders. Now, most of you are going to use two or three of these, but somebody somewhere finds these useful, to be honest. Um, so I'm just going to sort the group by date and time just to make it a bit easier to locate. And what I want is the image date token. So I'm going to drag that up there and tuck it next to Canada. Now what I want to happen is I want the top folder called Canada and then I want the date folders underneath. So to tell Capture One to do that, all I need to do is separate my typed in uh, Canada with a forward slash like so. So a little tiny forward slash in between. Now if you want to change the date format, then you'll notice some tokens have a little arrow on the right hand side. So I'm going to go for year, month, day, like so. So, and you'll see under the sample, it's just given me a look of, or sorry, uh, uh, an impression of how it's going to look. So Canada 2019 and then the dates after that. So let's say, okay. So that's going to save us a bit of work later on for like moving files around. Naming, now I have the ability to rename if I wish. So we build this in exactly the same way. So let's say I wanted to do the image name. So that would be the name as it is on the card. We wanted to, we could do that if you like, or I can do some complete manual rework. So again, I might call this Canada 2019. And then perhaps I want, again, the date if I wanted to, or perhaps I just want a counter. Now to make them unique, then of course it might help to have uh, today's date when I imported them or, or something like that. So what we do is let's do the current date like so, just to show you something else. Year, month, day. Um, I'm going to divide this up with just a little arrow and then let's also have a counter on the end of it as well. Now one digit counter, that's not going to last long. So I'm going to make this a four digit counter as well. So that's going to give me some unique uh, file names as well. So I actually had uh, an issue in my own um, catalog that uh, the counter had just reset itself in the camera because it had gone round a full full spin. So I ended up having duplicate names in my catalogue, which is not necessarily a good thing. So this gives me a nice unique, uh, unique name as well. 
Okay, so we're gonna rename them as they come into. Now, if I want to, we can add some metadata. So uh, let's put my copyright data in here as well. Description, Canada 2019 vacation. And if you wanted to, you could also throw in a style or a preset as well, just to kind of help you get started. So I'm gonna add one of our built-in styles. I like spring number three. So I'm gonna add that as well. So that's gonna copy them off the memory card put them in that folder called Canada 2019, arrange them by date into different folders when they were shut and rename them all at the same time as well and add a style. So let's um, say import all and that's gonna start going. Now, Helen, it's gonna be a little bit uh, slower because we're physically copying the data from memory card to uh, the hard drive as well. But again, it's a background task. So if I was desperate to start editing, I can just go ahead and do that as the import process um, is ticking away as well. Again, it's gonna generate our previews and now over here, we can see how it's organized, the shots like so. And if we look on the hard drive itself, uh, where did I put it? I put it in David Grover. Sorry, pictures more like my photos, Canada, and all the various different dates like so. And notice that it's renamed them at the same time too with a counter. Now, if you need to change your counter numbering, useful little tip under naming, if we click here, then you see you can set the import counter or reset it to zero. So if you want to start at a particular number, then you can do so as well. If I was to import again, it would actually remember the last number that we came to. So you see it's already at 22. So it's not something you have to think about if you're not gonna mess with the numbering. Okay, so now we've done two imports, two kind of totally different strategies. We can see the import I did here and the import I did here, just as little shortcuts. And all images shows me the sum of everything in my catalog as well. And the folders tool shows me exactly where all those photos are. Note, they can be in different locations. You're not restricted to just one place uh, in storing files. Now, case in point, if we just go to Thailand for a second, if I eject my external hard drive, let's eject this one. I'm gonna unplug it so you don't think I'm cheating as well. Uh, notice now on this hard drive, here it is. A nice little SSD, thoroughly recommend them. Is it gonna focus? Yes. So that's like a little one terabyte SSD on USB-C. Um, I've ejected it and you see the shot says it's offline and notice next to the name of the hard drive, uh, there's a little red dot. So that means that uh, drive is not available. But I can still go ahead and edit photos and play around with them. Uh, it just means I can't do certain things like um, export, I can't do luminosity masking, some high level stuff, but I can do a lot of management and so on and so forth. Um, so that's also really handy so you know that it's possible. Now, if we go to a certain shot and you think, actually, where is this photo? I've got no idea where this photo is in my li library. And then when uh, we look at virtual collections, you'll see this is also a useful technique because I could have photos spread across five different hard drives and what about if i've only got space to connect one in which hard drive should i connect so if i right click on the shot and say show in library just here straight away it will go to the folder that that photo belongs in so i can see ah that belongs in traveler ssd so i plug this guy back in again like so and then very quickly it mounts and you're good to go again and export and do all that usual stuff. So offline editing, totally possible, which is also why we make a preview. So you can do that offline edit. Okay, um, is it possible to reset the counter on each new import? So you have to do it manually as far as I remember. So you just have to be aware of what the sample says and then say reset import counter. You can't have it reset after a certain amount of time. I saw Bert was asking on uh, YouTube. So that's not possible, I'm afraid. So just to be uh, aware of how uh, the counter behaves.
Again, any questions about moving files to a different directory, Charles and others, uh, that's what we're going to cover next and also virtual organizing uh, as well. So hold that thought. Cool. Um, let's have a look. Oh, the reason Gail, while the Q&A says no questions is because I have it set to not publish, but I will do that now. So now you should see some questions uh, as well. Okay, um, let's have a look. Can you store a catalog on a cloud file service like OneDrive or Dropbox? You can, but it's a little bit, you, you can do it if, if you make sure that you never kind of shut down the catalog before Dropbox has finished syncing. Because what I have seen is that people have stored the catalog on Dropbox, done some things, changes, shut the computer down, Dropbox hasn't finished its sync, they go to another machine, open up, try to open that catalog, and then it's not current. So you can do it, but you just need to be eagle-eyed to make sure that the synchronization to OneDrive, Dropbox, whatever you use, uh, has completed. So run some tests and make sure um, um, that it's reliable for you. So don't just go straight into it, just do some tests on a small uh, catalog. Okay, um, deleting, I saw a few people were asking about as well, so we shall cover that too as well. Okay, um, and again, sorry if I can't answer all the questions because we could spend an hour answering all of them, so I hope you appreciate that. Okay, for those of you who are asking about moving files and folders and all that other kind of stuff, um, pay attention because this is where you really need to be kind of smart and understand how a database is working as well. So we've got two different directories here. We've got our external hard drive. We've got our internal hard drive. What if I wanted to move this photo from this location to this folder? It's just a simple drag and drop process. Now the move image warning will come up because we are physically moving it on the hard drive when we're working in the folders area. Now you can say, don't show this message again, but I quite like it there, just so I know that I'm actually moving something. Again, if you wanna move one or more files, you can just drag and drop like so. And then that way, the database keeps up because it knows that you're doing it within Capture One. Equally, if you wanted to move entire folders, you could also do that within Capture One as well. That's also perfectly possible, works fine, no issues there as well. If I wanted to move a file from this location to my external hard drive, let's just do that, then there's nothing to stop me doing that either. If I go over here, then here you see the shot moved happily to that external drive. So really, there's no reason why you should be doing this in anywhere other than Capture One. Because if you do do it in Capture One, uh, if you don't do it in Capture One, it's slower and you have to relocate what you've done. So to give you an example, let's right click and say show in Finder. So that will take me direct to that folder. Let's grab this one, the Baseball Dudes, and just move them down here. Now what happens? Straight away, uh, this one now says it's offline because Capture One doesn't know where it is. Like you idiot, you moved it in the Finder or Explorer, now I don't know where the heck it is. So what you have to do is right click on the photo or the thumbnail and say locate. And now you need to physically point to the destination that you moved it to. So I moved it to uh, this one, number one. There it is, and say open, and then Capture One will figure out and reestablish all the connections. Now I hope you can agree that's a much longer process than simply going drag and drop into a different location like so. Much, much easier. Um, now I've just been doing dragging one image, but there's nothing to stop you dragging a whole bunch of shots. So if I had five images here, for example, let's just shift select those five, I can easily move them to a different location like so. So now they've all moved over quite happily as well. Let's move them back uh, into their proper date folder and so on. And you see it's fast, it's quick, it's responsive and so on. So again, there's no reason not to do this um, in Capture One. Now if, again, in the Finder or Explorer, you move an entire folder to a different location, 
it's an identical process. You just need to right click and choose locate. But don't be a dummy, do it in Capture One and then you'll save yourself a whole bunch of additional time. Now, if you do happen to mess up and do a few things in uh, Finder, you've also got the synchronize option. So let's go to this folder, for example, and let's right click, say show in Finder. Uh, let's just delete this one, like so. So now it says it's offline, I've deleted it. So what I can also do is right click and say synchronize, and that will look for missing images and get rid of them from the, the catalog. And it will look for images that are not known to the catalog as well. So if I say synchronize, it's gonna say, remove one missing image from the catalog sync, like so. Now it's gone. But again, it's still not as quick as doing it from within Capture One. So if you want to uh, delete, for example, one or several images, you've got three different deletes, if you like. So if we go to the edit, sorry, image menu, right down the bottom, you can delete with a get out of jail card, if you like, which says move to catalog trash. So that will move it to like a secondary spot before you really delete it. Uh, you can say uh, delete from disk as well. So if I say delete from disk, I will get a further warning that says, are you sure? You can either just remove them from the catalog or delete them from the disk as well. So just be aware, if you want to delete, have a look in the edit image menu, sorry, and see the different options that you have as well. Now, the reason why this entry shows up twice is because if I was in a virtual collection, I'd have another option, which we'd look at as well. So you're fully aware of that. Okay. Um, now, so far, everything we have done has been with existing folders. So let's say in uh, Canada, I wanted to move some photos to a different folder. How would I do that? Now that's not an import process. That's, hi Capture One, I want this folder to be aware in my database as well. How do we do that? So up in folders, you see we've got plus and minus. Minus will simply remove the highlighted folder and its contents as well from the catalog. But I'm gonna say plus, and under Canada 2019, I'm gonna make a new folder. Let's just call it Quebec City for example, and plop that there. If we say add, it's now gonna appear as a folder I can use in Capture One itself. So if we find Quebec, then I could drag and drop to this point. Now, please don't be confused. This is not another way to import. If you think, oh, that could be a way I could import my photos. No, it's not. It's just a way to make a folder aware. So if I said plus and just went to this hard drive, for example, and grabbed you know a bunch of you know another shots here for example and said add it's not going to magically import those it's just making the folder aware for use so that you can drag and drop shots to it okay just checking my uh notes i think that's all we need to cover on working with uh folders and so on quick look at the questions again a um, couple of things about uh, basic stuff. If you want to delete a catalog, you just delete it from Finder or Explorer, simple as that. If you want to rename it, close the catalog, rename it here, open it back up, simple as that. Saw a couple of you um, asking about that as well. Uh, let's see, um, John was saying, when I export an image, why doesn't Capture One know where I've exported that image to? Because it's not an automatic import unless you do an edit with. So if you do edit with, then it will be reintroduced back into the catalog. If you simply export, you haven't told Capture One that you wish to import that as well. So it's not an automatic uh, process. So Laura, we um, answered your question, so that's good about renaming. Um, if I move the picture with another program, can I find the picture in the new location without losing the edited settings, if you use the locate option? But again, do it in Capture One, and then you save yourself uh, a whole bunch of work, to be honest. Um, and to move a catalog, best thing I can tell you about this, think of this as a Word document. So when I open this, it opens it in Capture One. 
if this was a Word document and I double clicked on it, it opens it in Word. What would you do if you wanted to move that Word document to a different place? You'd simply pick it up and move it. It's exactly the same principle. So it's literally just a document. We even technically refer to it as a document, which says, hi, Capture One. There's some photos here. These are the adjustments. These are the collections they're in, and it has this metadata. Go get it kind of thing. So that's really all it is. It's just a big long stream of text, much like a Word document. So it really doesn't need to be any more complicated um, than that. Thanks for your comments over on Facebook and YouTube as well. I haven't forgotten about you, um, but there's just uh, lots to answer. Um, could I? That's a good question from Vivek, and we can relate this to anything. He was over on uh, Facebook. How do I organize my photos uh, imports and save them in different folders. Now we can apply Vivex question to anything really. So uh, for example, uh, let's just go back into the tokens. So we've just put them into a folder called Canada 2019 like so. Now if we wanted to before that, if we look at uh, metadata basic, so you see under metadata basic we have a token called format. So if I put that uh, before image data, like so, it would actually divide them up into a folder. See, we've got raw and then JPEG, like so, simple as that. And then it would then divide them up into their different dates. Or if I put format over here, like so, let's get rid of one of those forward slashes and did that, then now it would put them into the dates and divide them up in between raw and JPEG. So again, that's not something Vivek you would have to do manually. Now, you can apply that principle to anything. So if you shot Canon Nikon and you want to divide them up, you would think, oh, I wonder if there's a token for the camera model. If I look in vendor specific, we've got, uh, not that one, EXIF camera, we've got make, model, and serial number, and so on. So there's pretty much a token for uh, every single scenario you could think of. So however you want to sort on import, go hunting for a token. Now on in the support pages, there's also a document which describes in very simple terms what each one does as well. So I hope that answers your question, Vivek, as well. Okay, so we've talked about organizing with folders. Now what about user collections, which is my preferred uh, method of organization. So I don't really do any in-depth organizing by folders because I feel there's too many uh, limitations. Because I can only have a photo in one folder. So for example, this picture of uh, the old town in Quebec City, for example, lives in this folder. Now if I think, hmm, I'd love to make a collection of shots that I want to print uh, or make postcards or upload to a website, I can't bring them all together in one place unless I move them. But now my Quebec City pictures are in a folder called stuff to print or whatever. Now you could duplicate the raw file, uh, but that would be cuckoo because then you're going to end up with two different raw files. Which one is current? Which one has the, 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 the best settings? Which one is corrupt correctly? All that kind of stuff. So folders or organizing in folders uh, has lots of limitations in that respect. So instead, we have four extremely powerful organizational items we can use uh, in user collections. Now, we're, there's four, but they all play or sort of a different role in organization. Now, we're going to start kind of at top level with project. So I'm going to make a project called uh, Canada Vacation 2019. Now, I know this is a kind of amateur example. Um, but you can, again, you can apply this to anything. It could be a work project. It could be a long-term project. It could be something personal like this, a vacation. Doesn't matter. The principle is exactly the same. So I'm going to make a project right here. And that was the plus button in user collections, if I was too quick. And I think, OK, I want to import everything I did from that vacation. So I'm going to go back to my recent imports, select them all, and drag them into that project. But I can't. So if I try and stick it in the project, nothing happens. Why is that? Because the project is, if you like, your um, master container. So it's the box 
that we want to put things in. But rather than just chucking photos in it randomly to scatter all over the place, we want to give some kind of context and organizing organization to them. <clears throat> so I'm going to right click on the project, say new inside, and I want to make an album inside the project. So we're going to call this uh, all photos like so. Now I can happily drag all my photos to that collection like so. And there they are. Now they haven't been moved from their location. Oh, that's very Canadian, isn't it? Maple leaf on the floor. Um, they haven't been moved from their location. It is a virtual collection uh, that is existing in my catalog. So now I want to categorize a bit further. So I'm going to right click new inside Canada, say new album, and let's just call this baseball. I'm uh, going to find those. Uh, where are they? Did I move them? At the top. So we're going to grab those baseball and pop them in there. Notice that these photos now exist in two different locations, which is great, which is exactly what I want. Uh, let's also make some, sorry, another right click and make another album and we call this Quebec City. And find those shots. So that started down. I can't remember if that was in Quebec. Quebecians, uh, let me know. I think it might have been. Let's pop those in there. That's definitely Quebec City, though. So there we go. So I can do some, you know, organizing like that, which is great. Now, what I can also do is make dynamic uh, collections using smart albums. So smart albums populate themselves based on the criteria that you decide. So up in here, I'm going to right click once more and choose new inside and say new smart album. So we need to define how this smart album is going to populate itself. So let's call this one five star photos. So in other words, the best ones for want of a better expression. Now we can build our search criteria by hitting plus and picking again from a huge list of various metadata, or we can simplify it and use a preset over here, which just has simple star rating and color tags. Now, if you build more complicated or, or advanced search criteria, don't forget to save a search preset if that's something you're gonna do a lot. But this way, I'm just gonna pick five stars and say, okay, like so. So now if I go through to all photos and think, what do I like? Well, that's five stars. This is five. Of course, they're all five stars because I took them, for example. Um, let's say Niagara is five and let's just pick one more. Let's say that's five as well. So now if we go to this folder, it's populated itself with all the five star shots. Now, if I was to suddenly decide that's a terrible picture, it's not worthy of five stars. As soon as I hit zero on my keyboard, then it's out of that collection because it's dynamic. And again, if I go back to all photos and decide this shot, let's go Canadian. Uh, let's mark that five stars. And we tap here, then you can see now it's added to that collection. Sorry, this one. So super, super simple, dynamic and fast and so on. So we've looked at albums, smart albums, projects. Now the last one that we see in here is groups like so. Now the group is your kind of OCD cleanup because you can imagine after some time, this list is gonna get very long. So I have, you know, a hundred projects or whatever in my catalog. Now they will get very long and kind of spill over the end of the screen and you're always scrolling uh, back and forth, for example. Um, so what I'm going to do is tidy this up and make a group and we're going to call this group uh, something like family events or whatever. Uh, family events, there it is. So I'm going to put, whoops, I put it in there. Let's just drag and drop this out. I'm going to put my project inside that group. So now it hides that away and I could have other groups. Uh, let's just go to all images and I'm going to make another group and we could call this commercial work, for example tuck all my stuff in there, you get the idea. So now we can just organize this better. Uh, if we wanted to go, you know, one level up, then we could right click into the project and I could make a new group and call this albums. If I had like hundreds of albums, for example, 
So we could drop those into there. It's just all drag and drop like everything else. And then also I could make another group inside here and call this Smart Albums, for example, like so. So now I could pop this one in there like so. So now we can organize this as heavily or unheavily as, as you would like. But the group is just really a nice way to organize that just a little bit better, for example. So one last thing, and I'm so glad you asked, it wasn't Jim, uh, it was uh, Frank said, can I control the source where a smart folder searches? Um, I'm so glad you asked that because that's exactly what the project does. So let's just go to a completely different location. Let's go to Fabien and let's mark some of these five stars. So I'm just gonna mark a few of these shots, five stars like so. Now, if I go back to this five star album, I don't see him. Why is that? Because this five star album is only searching what's in this project. So you imagine you've got your box, you've thrown all your pictures in it, you've put them into nice little folders and you've written some kind of index of what's in there. It's only searching or indexing that box. It's not looking anywhere else. Only what's in Canada vacation uh, 20, 2019. So that's why the project is smart and the group, Klaus, is only just that kind of OCD organizational item. So the project really puts a limit on the smart album. So if I go back to all images, so that's the entire catalog, and then I make another smart album, and let's call this one global five star, five, five star photos. So this is the entire catalog and we do the same thing. We do a five star preset like so. And we say, okay. Now this one, I'm gonna close down Canada. So you see this one is living outside of that project. So it's searching my entire catalog. So it's searching all of every single photo in the catalog, all 234 of them. So not only will it pick up Canada, it's gonna pick up Feb Fabienne's shots as well. Whereas this one is limited to what's inside the project. So that is the crucial difference between a project and a group. So, cause you could argue, well, instead of making this a project, I'll just make it a group. You could, but then your smart album wouldn't work correctly. So that's the whole idea of having the project limiting the scope of that smart album. Now, if I wanted to, you know, get my organization mojo on again, I could make another group and we call this global globular, global uh, smart, albums albums like so and then i could pop this one in it and now i've got you know nice organization so i can say oh i want to find all my good five star shots Ta -da! there it is and it will be fast because it's only searching and searching a database it's not drilling through you know thousands of raw files looking at each one individually and deciding which one should be in this collection so hopefully that gives you some insight into how to organize better in the user collection space. How are we doing for time? Tight, because we've got to talk about keywords, but we can make that super fast and super easy. Uh, that's a good question from Facebook, and I don't know the answer. How can I place projects album in different order than alphabetical? Actually, you can just move them around like so. So if I want all photos at the top, then I can just drag and drop like so, and it doesn't matter what order they go in. So just drag and drop, or if I didn't wanna have uh, global smart albums here, then I could move it up here, for example. So you can just juggle that around um, as you wish. Um, last couple of questions. And again, sorry if I don't answer every everything, but we have social media support community <laughs> also to help you out as well. Um, good question from Robert, and this is actually a feature I would like. Could you kind of recreate the structure here into something into a user collection? It's not possible, um, but I can see why that would be nice because I'm often sort of duplicating the structure. But the way I do it, if it's interesting, I keep the structure here very simple and user collections I kind of go full nuts on. Because if I want to find a picture quickly, um, then I can look at, you know, family events, okay, birthday parties, blah, 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 
whatever, I can divide that up nice and quickly rather than trying to find stuff by date because I can never remember uh, the right dates of anything anyway. So by naming things in user collections, I find it much easier. Uh, a few of you asked uh, about what's the most number of pictures you can store. It's very difficult to answer because it really depends on uh, the system that you're working with. So my system of laptop, internal SSD and external hard drive, I have 25,000 shots, I think. I'm not a prolific photographer, but I have a few. Um, that catalog opens in about 30 seconds and runs nice and quick and everything. But if I was on like a really old external hard drive that didn't move very quickly and the internal hard drive was slower, then I would expect a performance slowdown. So it's really all how you expect it to be performing based on hardware. Um, so some people will think, you know what, I'm going to have a catalog per year to keep it light. Uh, if you've got a slower performing system, if you have tons of, you know, horsepower, then you can have a, a master catalog, for example. OK, um, let's have a look at the next section, which is about keywords, which is something which um, we all should be better at, but we're not. So <laughs> let's go back to um, let's just go to all photos, for example. And we're going to go over here and we're in the metadata tab. So the info tab and we have two tools, keywords and keyword library. Now the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Now, I guess what you're keen to do is eagerly grab one shot or a group of collections and start hurriedly typing in keywords, baseball, Canada, you know, kids, whatever, straight away. I would say don't do that because what's gonna happen is when you come back to it to a later date, you're gonna go to a different shot and you're gonna spell Canada wrong and then you're gonna have two different Canadas um, you'll just be riddled with sort of differences in keywords in uppercase, lowercase, different spelling, different organization and so on. So don't do that and actually go out to the web and look for uh, someone who's done all the hard work for you and built a keyword library. Now you can buy these, um, but I've also found one which I've been using for a while, which is, is free. And I'd love to know who the author is so I could thank him. Uh, let me put this... Um, it's easy to Google for. If you just Google Lightroom keyword list blogspot, then it will come up. Let me copy paste this um, into the chat. And if you're on Facebook or YouTube, don't worry, I will, uh, nope, I put it in the wrong place. Hang on. I'm going to put it in the chat. So everyone stop chatting and copy paste that way you can. For those of you on Facebook and YouTube, I'll make sure I put it um, in the comments afterwards as well, so you can find it. I'd love to know who the author is. I've scoured this site and I can't find it, uh, his, his or her name anywhere, but if you go to get the list, you can download it. And what you end up with, let's pop that out the way. Uh, let's just move that back into uh, the web. Um, and what you end up with is very simply, hopefully I remember to download it, is this which is just a huge text list, text list of keywords that this um, person has laboriously made over a certain number of years, I would imagine. Now it's designed for Lightroom, but same principle in Capture One, we use the same structure. Um, so that way we can import this into Capture One and give ourselves a master catalog or master keyword library, sorry. So in keyword library, I'm gonna click on the three dots and say create keyword library and say from keyword text file. So now we're gonna ask for this. So I'm just gonna hit foundation list, say open. Uh, let's give it a name. We're gonna call this master keyword library. Master keyword library. I really can't type under pressure, create. And now as if by magic, we've got an entire keyword library for us to pull from, which is great because it's our master. So now if I go to, let's just select these first couple of shots and I start typing. So let's type baseball. There we go. What sports baseball? Tap enter. Away we go. If I type children, child, age, like so. So now we've got that. If I type sport, 
um, sports cars, so we don't have anything for that. So then that's when we could think, ah, I need to add that to my master catalog. So let's, I'm gonna select all of them for a second and type Canada, nothing for Canada. Okay, so now I can go digging into my master keyword library and see what we can do. So if I go to where, uh, the author has kindly given us a structure that we can already adhere to. So I'm gonna mm, rename this into Canada, like so. Uh, it's not a state, I get attacked by Canadians if I call it a state, so let's rename that and call it a province. And then down here in the city, place, or whatever, uh, we're gonna call it, um, do, 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 do. let's rename that. And we're gonna call that um, Quebec, for example. And if I wanted another one, I can right click on the next level up, say create keyword child, and let's give that Ontario, like so. And then within that further child, we can then have cities and so on. It really depends how, how far you wanna go. So now I've created my first country with its provinces uh, and, and uh, provinces like so. So if we go here and I type um, Ontario, then it's gonna pick up all of that like so. Simple as that, very, very nicely. If we go down to, let's select uh, these ones. Now I've mistakenly added that as Ontario, so what I'm gonna do is just go here and I'm gonna delete those keywords. So if I want to, I can just zap those, or I could go to the top level and delete those out. So now this one is Quebec. So if I type in Quebec, like so, a couple of taps, and away we go. So this way you're always pulling from a master. So everything will be spelled the same, uh, your structure's gonna be nice and neat, and so on and so forth. Now what about these four? So let's go to those. They are landscape, so if I type landscape, we've got some choices, orientation, could add that if I wanted to, landscape photography, let's do that. So now I've got keywords added to that as well. So, you know, Nicely done in, in that respect. Now, almost finishing up with keywords, uh, we saw you how to delete, you just hover over the keyword and it shows you the little X like so, so you can obliterate it. Um, if you go to, obviously, if I select, if I do a group selection like this, now we kind of have to know which shots don't have some keywords in. So you can see some of these photos don't contain those keywords, so you see the minus next to it, means some of this collection doesn't contain those keywords. So that's why you might see that minus pop up from time to time. Another thing we can do obviously with uh, keywording is use keywords to search for photos. So let me just go to Fabienne, for example. I'm just gonna add some keywords to this as well. So let's type in landscape again. So that's the kind of photography like so. And let's go back to, let's collapse our folders for a minute, and open up uh, filters. So we could also think in our smart album, you know, I'd love a smart album that would always show me landscape shots. Let's use that example as we've just um, made some. So I'd love to be able to do that. So how am I gonna do that? Right, well I think what I need to do is, first I'm just gonna go to all images, I need to go up here and say uh, new smart album. And then, okay, I probably need to base it on keywords. So let's see if there's a keyword tag. Yes, there is. And now it's got to contain what? So now you think, how did I spell landscape? Hopefully I spelled it correctly. So I could start doing that. But what if it's you know a keyword that you're not entirely sure exists in your catalog? How did you spell it? All that kind of stuff. So this is the slow way to do it. So let's do the clever way. So if I go to my all images collection and go down to filters, you can see it shows me every single keyword that's in my catalog. So I can see, okay, I've got 20 from Canada. I've got two baseball shots. Um, here we go, I've got some landscape shots like so. So now if I click this filter, then it shows me all the landscape shots that are in my catalog. Great. Wouldn't it be nice if we could convert this to a collection, like a smart album or a, or a um, album? So this is a feature you would probably never self-discover because it's extremely well hidden, I will admit. 
but in the search bar to the right, there's three little orange dots. If we click that, oh, it's on my other monitor. If we click that, uh, you'll see it says keywords contains blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of pre-sorted which keywords are necessary to bring that selection up. So now down here, I can say create smart album. We're gonna call this all landscape um, photos based on keywords, if you wanna do that, save. Now I'm gonna put this in my global smart album folder so it's nicely organized, whoops, excuse me. And now we've always got access to my landscape photos. So if I go down to uh, another collection, so let's uh, go to uh, Jan, for example, and let's just add a landscape keyword to these as well, landscape, like so. Now, if I go back to my smart album, uh, do, 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 global smart albums, all my landscape photos, there they are popped up nicely. So again, that's another good reason for making that group, um, you know, to, to always be, be searching for that. And of course, don't forget you can combine those terms as well. So um, I'm running out of space on my monitor, but let's say we wanted to see only the five star, sorry, five star, it's gone the, hang on, let's just, I'm just gonna remove my filters tools. It's gone a bit weird there, I would say, and let's add it back again, filters, that's better. Okay, so let's say we wanted to combine in my all images, because the filtering is gonna show you what's in your currently selected collection. That's really important. So if I go to baseball, you see it's only showing me, look, you've got two five-star images in this collection. So if I go to all images, you see the numbers change, that's why. So let's say, okay, I only wanna see my best landscape photos. So they're gonna be five stars, for example, and they're gonna have the keyword Where's my keywords down here? They're gonna have the keyword landscape photography. So if I hold down Alt and click that, that's now filtered to those two different um, criteria. So they've got the landscape keyword and their five stars. And if I click on the orange dot, then you'll see the rating must equal five and the keyword must equal landscape. And the criteria must match all of that. So again, I could create a smart album, which is only gonna show me my best landscape shots, put it in my global collection and so on. Um, it's also the same if you like searching by uh, camera metadata, for example. Um, let's say you wanna find a particular lens in your collection. So I'm on all images. Uh, let's just collapse down rating, color tag, date. Uh, so we've got format. So let's see if we can have a filter for cameras or camera data. So if I click on the three dots and say show hide filters, again, you've got this big long list a myriad of different filters that you can use. So I'm interested in camera lenses. So let's turn that on. Now we can see, okay, everything that was shot with the Fujifilm, Fujinon, XF18, et cetera, et cetera. Click that, there we go. So that's all shot with that. Again, if I wanted a smart album that always monitored that lens, I could click here and say, create smart album. Now to manually create that, I would have to manually type in and nail the exact way that that manufacturer decided to uh, call their lens. And Sony, Fuji, Nikon, they all have massive long names for their lenses in metadata. So now I could say create smart album and that is the Fuji 1855. Much easier to remember, for example, save. So now I've got my Fuji 1865, stick that in global smart albums, and away we go, simple. So really that's the whole point of the user collections area that you've got all that metadata, all right, squeaky chair, you've got all that metadata to use to help you find and locate uh, the right, um, right photos. Okay, we've overrun, so I'm gonna just have a little look uh, at the questions, and then we will have to bid uh, farewell to everybody. Okay, a few uh, questions came up about sessions. That's that's a webinar I'll probably do in June, I would think, May or, or June. June now, actually. God, it's May already. Um, because it's a totally different organizational structure, 
better for different things. So what we can do is kind of do the same thing, but also for sessions, and then talk about how you can combine the two. But there wasn't enough time um, to do so. Uh, are keyword searches case dependent, Craig was asking. You know what, Craig, I can't actually remember. I think they are case dependent, which is why I suggest building your master keyword and pulling from that because then you never end up with spelling mistakes, duplicates, case issues, all of that kind of stuff. And the fact that this nice man or woman has created this entire keyword list for us, we might as well use that and build um, from that. Let's see. Um, I'd like to work on a big catalog located on a NAS. Could I put my catalog on an external SSD and work from it from another computer? You could actually, because I have, um, Again, it depends on the, the speed, but on this uh, SSD, for example, I've got various different uh, catalogs on here as well, which I can open from the SSD and they work super nice as well. So again, it depends on the performance. I could put a catalog on a ancient USB one hard drive and it would work and it would open, but it just might be a bit painful to, you know, to work with. Uh, let's see. Um, Just having a look in the questions. Uh, can you keyword search by date or month of photos were created? Yeah, just remember in the filters tool, and this applies to any sort of similar question, that you have a lot of filters to search on. So if you wanna know by shutter speed, aperture, lens, camera model, camera serial number, manufacturer, and so on, there's probably a filter for it. And any filter, as you saw, can be converted into if you like a smart album or an album. So there's really kind of, the only limit to search potential is the metadata stored in the files, to be honest. Um, and of course, that's very extensive. So the chances of not being able to find the search criteria you need um, is pretty, uh, pretty slim, I would say. Uh, let's see. Um, looking at the time. Last question, let's pick one so the YouTube and Facebook people don't feel uh, left out. Um, for those of you asking about session and catalog sort of combination, there is an old webinar from Capture One 12, uh, I believe called Catalog Versus Sessions, which is kind of a more compact version of this, which also discusses between the two as well. So have a look for that on YouTube, Catalog um, versus sessions. Um, let's see. Um, Harry on Facebook, yep, nice, has found the link as well. So that's the one you're looking for. But I'll put the link in the comments of, uh, for the video later on. Uh, don't worry about that. Um, can you use the same keywords in the sessions as the catalog? Yeah, that's a good question to, to close on. So you see this master keyword library. This will appear in any catalog or session I make, which again is great for consistency across the board. So yes, um, and also any individual catalog or session I'll make will also show me what keywords are present in this catalog. But I always ignore that and always work off my master keyword library. But if I make a new catalog now, let's call it untitled, and we go to keywords, you see my master keyword library is here. So totally fine. That was a, a great question to end on. Uh, last thing to, to, to add um, before the roof caves in because it's raining very hard. Um, you can, uh, today is the last day for a, an upgrade offer. So if you're on not on Capture One 20, if you use the code um, upgrade 30, for those of you in the webinar room, uh, you can see the offer at the top uh, that says upgrade 30. So that gives you 30% off uh, an upgrade from say version 11, 12, 10 or whatever up to Capture 120, but that's only valid um, for today. Great, okay. So I hope today was useful. I'm really sorry we couldn't answer every single question. We could probably spend an hour just answering questions, I would say, uh, on catalog management and so on. Uh, don't forget you can always review this, take it slow. Uh, you can always run a test catalog, of course. Um, and just make up small catalogs and just really get into how the different organization works. Um, 
doesn't matter if you mess it up delete the catalog start again so <laughs> there we go many thanks for joining us today i hope you can still hear me in the thunderstorm and enjoy the rest of your thursday take care and see you all soon bye now